Thank you, Vismita. Thank you, Chris. Merry Christmas. And we're glad to have you here tonight. This is a short service, and it is intended to be for the kids. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. The gospel story is best told by Luke, in my view. And we begin with Luke 2, verses 8 and 9. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The lighting of the last candle, the Christ candle, with our Advent wreath will be traditionally lit by the family with the youngest child in the congregation, and that is the Alex Lewis family. Uh, we, light, <clears throat> we light four candles to remind us of hope, peace, joy, and love. Now we light the center candle, the Christ candle, remind, to remind us who is at the center of the Christmas story. Advent means coming. We are preparing ourselves for the days when, according to the prophet Isaiah, the people who walked in darkness have seen great light. Those who have lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We are preparing ourselves for the days when, according to the prophet Micah, from one of the little clans of Judah shall come the one who is to rule in Israel, who shall be the one of peace, a time when the Lord our God will be in our midst, a warrior who gives victory, who will rejoice over us with gladness, who will renew us in his love, a time when the Lord will fulfill the promise that every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill shall be made low in the rough places made a plain a time when there will be made uh, a time when there will be made straight in the desert a highway for our god a time when there will be justice and righteousness in the land and the work of the people of god will be called the lord is our righteousness love, we welcome the blaze of light at the dawning of Christmas. May the light of Christ's presence burn so brightly in our hearts that we will bring the message of your love to every person, family, community, and nation. Amen. Our first gospel lesson tonight comes from Luke. Chapter 2, verses 10 to 20. And because this is a kid-friendly service, I have chosen to read it from Eugene Peterson's The Message. So hear these words from The Message. The angel said, don't be afraid. I am here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town a savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises, glory to God in the heavenly heights, peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, 
the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed for us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear deep within herself. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. second lesson is from the Gospel according to John, and it is the first 14 verses of the first chapter, a very mystical and theological piece, but as Eugene Peterson tells it in the message, it has a great understanding. Hear these words. The Word was first, the Word present to God, God present to the Word. 
The Word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without Him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The light, life, blazed out of the darkness, and the darkness just couldn't put it out. There once was a man, his name, John, sent by God to point out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe in. John was not himself the light. He was there to show the way to the light. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life he brings into light. He was in the world. The world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed, and would do what he said, he made them to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish, friends. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, children, I have written what I'm about to say specifically for you children. So if you want to come a little closer, that's okay. Or move to the center of the aisle, that's okay. Because what I'm going to do is tell you a story. A story that is really important. Now you don't normally get a chance to listen to sermons, but that's okay because most of the stories that sermons are about, actually you sort of know those and if you do know them, maybe you don't know all of them. So there might be a little surprise or two if you want. And you can come right down and sit right here if you want. That's just fine. Any of you who want to do that, children and grandchildren, that's good. That works. Thank you for coming forward. Here they come. Isn't this fun? There's lots of spots. Lots of spots. Okay. Here comes someone else. That's okay. A couple more, maybe. Isn't this wonderful to sit here up front like this and listen to all the big people are back there? And we're going to listen to the sermon. Here we are. Nice slide. Well, we're going to talk about the baby Jesus birth. And it happened a really long time ago. 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago. Now, 2,000 years ago, they didn't have cars and they didn't have phones, and they didn't have computers or tablets, and they didn't have almost all the things that we have today. And what's fascinating about it is they didn't even have things like mm, books or mm, Nintendo Switch mm, or whatever, and or My Little Pony, didn't have any of those kinds of things. Or PS5. They, PS5, and they didn't have any cars. They didn't know what engines were. They didn't even have books. They had to go read the scrolls. That's right. But the thing is that when baby Jesus was born, the whole world changed. 
And Jesus grew up to be a really good man. And he came here and he stayed on earth to show us how to love one another. How to love our mommies and daddies. How to love our little sisters and brothers. How to love our big sisters and brothers. And Jesus taught us how to care for the people who were sick and how to feed the people that didn't have food. And he taught us how to take care of people who are old and people who are lonely and even people who smell funny. Jesus taught, taught us how to do all those things. Now, when Jesus was born, his mama and his daddy raised him to be a really good man. And he was able to go out, and he was a teacher. But in those days, they didn't have computers, and they didn't have online school, and they didn't even have blackboards, and they, he didn't even have a piece of chalk. He didn't. Jesus didn't have a piece. No, didn't have any of those things. But what he did is he went out and he told people, stories and he told stories so they could understand and then those stories were repeated again and again and again and we're still telling those same kinds of stories today 2,000 years later and the stories that he told were all about his relationship with God how God was his father and how God sent him to save the world. And so it's really fascinating to think about Jesus being able to explain and tell all the people in the world that God was his father. And so he changed the world because of that. And so what would happen is that Jesus had people that he helped, and the people he helped, he was teaching them, and they were called disciples and the disciples learned things from him and once they learned them they were able to go out and do the same kind of thing they were able to help heal the sick and give food to the people who didn't have food and to help the lonely and to comfort those who were grieving they were able to do this and they then went out and taught other people so they had their own disciples and those disciples had their own people that they taught. And that continued and continued and continued all across the world. And they used to gather in groups. And the, when they gathered in groups, they would call the group a church. And Jesus became known as the Christ. And so that's why we call ourselves Christians, because there are churches all over the world that are filled with Christians on this very night to celebrate the birth of the baby Jesus. And that's why we're here tonight. Now, in a few minutes, as soon as we're finished here, we're going to do something different. We're going to do a sacrament of communion. Now, those are big words. And a sacrament is something that the church does to help remember Jesus and does it not every week, but it does it several times a year. And that sacrament that we're going to do tonight is called communion. And communion is celebrating our memory of Jesus. So we're here to celebrate his birth, but also to celebrate his memory. Because when Jesus was about ready to die, he and his disciples went to a room and they had dinner. And at dinner, Jesus lifted up the bread and he showed him the bread. And he said, when you take this bread and eat it, it will sustain you and enable you to be filled. And you can go out and do work of Christ in the world. And then after they finished eating, he took the cup and he poured the cup and he said to them, you know, this cup is kind of like the blood in my heart. 
that I shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And so whenever you take the cup and eat the bread, you remember me until I come again. And it's been 2,000 years, and we're still waiting for Jesus to come again. So we're going to celebrate the sacrament of communion in a few minutes, and anyone who believes in Jesus can come forward. And so we can do that. So I want to leave this message with you. We're here to celebrate the birth of the baby Jesus, and we're here to celebrate remembering him for more than 2,000 years, okay? Let's say a prayer. Will you pray after me? Everyone can pray after me, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for Advent candles and for baby Jesus and what he taught us and all of the disciples and all of the churches that call themselves Christian churches across the world. And thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus and for sending here, sending him here that we might be saved. And so as we take this communion, help us to remember the saving grace of your Lord and sa- your Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, thank you. You can go back to your chairs. Friends, go in peace with your little children, celebrating the birth of an infant some 2,000 years ago. As we go into the night, we can rest assured because of God, because of his love for us, and because of Christ, all is well. Here are the words from a song called All Is Well, that are particularly apropos. All is well, all is well. Angels and men rejoice. For tonight, darkness fell into the dawn of love's light. Sing alleluia. All is well, all is well. Let there be peace on earth. Christ has come. Go and tell. He is in the manger. Sing Alleluia. All is well. All is well. Lift up your voice and sing. Born is now Emmanuel. Born is our Lord and Savior. All is well. All is well. Good night.